Schefter. They're unable to come up with the bad bounce. Offensive rebound, and you foul him trying to bother it from behind. That is the worst case scenario. Over the last few off seasons, Bradley Beal has been one of the most sought after free agent targets basically by any team that wants to get better that has not been able to get over that hump as a contending team. We've seen teams like the Heat, the Celtics, the Nets, even the Wizards thought if they brought him back that they would get him back and become a contender instantly. And there's honestly no reason why a team wouldn't believe this. Bradley Beal is a consistent 30 point per game scorer. Last year he struggled with injuries and he has been out since about the second month of the previous NBA season, the one that just finished. So we don't exactly know what version of Bradley Beal we're going to be getting back. But at the end of the day, he is an electric and efficient scorer and a guy that can play some defense when needed. So that is one of the reasons so many teams have went after Bradley Beal and tried to get him to leave Washington. The only problem has become Bradley Beal does not seem to want to leave Washington. And can we really blame him? $241 million is what he's facing if he stays in Washington about a six-year contract something that will give him generational wealth for his family and himself the rest of his life and that's something that's very difficult to pass that we've seen it with guys like him and Damian Lillard guys that are on bad NBA teams but they love the city they love the fans they don't want to leave the city because they have that opportunity for wealth for fame and for a legacy that they can leave on that team. We saw it with guys who stayed on one team their entire career, from Tim Duncan to Kobe to um, Dirk Nowitzki, guys that maybe didn't have half have that opportunity to leave, or they did and they decided to stay. And it's paid off for some players, but for Bradley Beal and guys like him, like Damian Lillard and Bradley Beal, it did not pay off. At least it hasn't so far. We aren't going to talk about Damian Lillard in this video. Maybe I make another video about him, but Bradley Beal is the topic of discussion today he has been in washington since his rookie season where he was drafted him and john wall for a while there looked like they could be the next best backcourt in the nba their duo and the way they played off of each other's talents looked amazing looked like they might be poised for a final run they had that very close matchup against the celtics they ultimately ended up losing in the western Con or eastern conference semifinals which the celtics would then go on to lose to the Cavs in the conference finals which then left the Wizards out of the playoffs. We saw this for a few years where they struggled to get any footing in the playoffs, and then now John Wall gets injured, Bradley Beal gets injured, John Wall leaves, Westbrook comes in last year. They do all right. They get the 8th seed. They play the 76ers. Obviously, last year, the 76ers were a very, very good, good team, different than they were this year with Ben Simmons or without Ben Simmons. They get dominated in that series. They trade Westbrook for a bunch of role players. They get in Spencer Dinwiddie. What do you think he's going to be? Um, a good replacement for Westbrook. None of it works. Bradley Beal gets hurt. Your team's bad, but you bring back Chris Stapps Porzingis. So that is a bright spot in all of this terrible um, times for the Washington Wizards. And that's why, in my opinion, Bradley Beal may end up going back to Washington. We know how good Chris Stapps can be. He hasn't been at that level since he was in New York. Injuries, maybe you can blame it on that. You can blame it on the mental aspect of things. But if Chris Stapps can get back to the way he was playing in New York his rookie and sophomore year before his ACL injury, maybe the Wizards have a chance and some saving grace. Kyle Kuzma had a great year last year. They have a good mold around Daniel Gafford, Rui Hachimura, Denny Avdia, a bunch of good role players and young prospects that could become stars at some point in their career. And if Bradley Beal sticks around, I could see this team making just a little bit of noise next year and building towards the future. But... That's a big if because there are so many other teams that Bradley Beal could be going to right now that could get him a championship ring instantly. We have so many teams that would love to have him from Cleveland, Miami, Los Angeles, both teams, Brooklyn. Um, we've got other teams that would like to go after him like Boston. Boston's a team that doesn't have a primary ball handler at the point guard position. You've got Marcus Smart. You've got Peyton Pritchard, two guys who are not reliable enough to actually run your offense through, in my opinion, and two guys that could easily run that shooting guard morphed position over from the one and allow Bradley Beal to come in and play the point guard position and 
play make and hold the ball and handle the ball on most possessions that's something that Bradley Beal is capable of doing so that's why the Celtics would like to go after him especially in a season or going into a season after they basically saw how little firepower they had in the finals and that's what lost them that series that's why the Celtics would go after Bradley Beal you've got the Heat a team that have been in the playoffs and they've been so close to the finals they even made it in 2020 but it seems like every year they just have a little bit more they need to get over a little bit of a hump they need to try and fly over in order to actually make that finals appearance again and win it instead of losing in the finals or losing in the conference finals anything like that that is another reason the heat would go after a guy like bradley beal the celtics and the heat are two of the main teams as we all know the lakers are always in the books for trading for anybody any superstar or any player that might be looking to get traded or leave his team there's always going to be conversations that the lakers might look to trade for him the clippers could also be a target destination um, we've seen them try to get a little bit better in the wake of Kawhi returning next year. So they'd be an interesting destination as well. Also, the Portland Trailblazers are a team that apparently showed some interest to a degree in getting Bradley Beal to pair beside Damian Lillard. And that would be an interesting duo. I don't think it would be quite enough to put them over the top. But definitely, definitely an enticing deal for the Trailblazers if you're able to give up a young player like Anthony Simons and in return get Bradley Beal a guy that could get you some games and win you some games right now beside Damian Lillard, who's also coming off of an injury, which would be an interesting duo and um, situation to see. But if I had to choose my favorite destination for Bradley Beal and the place I think he should go other than staying in, um, in Washington, I would have to go with the Cleveland Cavalier Cavaliers. Now, I will make a video about the Cavs because I have very high hopes for this team. And even what, the, depending on what they do in the offseason, my hopes could go very high compared to what they already are. I think this team can come back next year and make some massive noise in the Eastern Conference. I'm not saying they're going to make a finals, but I think they definitely make the playoffs and they may make a push into the second or the third round if they play correctly and if they play how I know they can. That's why I think a guy like Bradley Beal would make sense to bring in, a guy that has some experience. Right now, they're pretty much all young or guys that have never played in a playoff game or a serious situation. You've got Darius Garland, who's going into his fourth or third year. Um, Jarrett Allen, who's a good center, a guy that finally is getting some recognition as he's playing well in Cleveland, but he's never been on a stage like this before. Then you've got a guy like Evan Mobley, who will be going into his second year, coming off of a terrific rookie season and he needs a little bit of leadership and Bradley Beal can come in trade Colin Sexton a young piece and some picks for Bradley Beal you have an amazing starting lineup imagine that you have Darius Garland Bradley Beal Isaac Okoro Evan Mobley and Jared Allen you cannot tell me that lineup would not make the finals or at least make a push for the finals depending on what they do with the bench we've seen trades where maybe Kevin Love gets sent to a for a package for some younger prospects a guy that maybe can help you out a little bit more at the position you need. Maybe they trade Laurie Markkinen a, a lot earlier than expected after trading for him. Actually, this past offseason, something that nobody really saw coming when it happened. There's a lot of options the Cavaliers could go through and a lot of different routes they could go to get Bradley Beal on the team and then also refine their bench just to match the mold of what this team is. But I think the Cavaliers would be the best destination for Bradley Beal to go to. And I think if they were able to trade for him, definitely it could trade or change the entire outlook of their next season and how the fans would feel about the team and how the team would feel about their season whether they can actually make some noise or not how do you guys feel about Bradley Beal and his free agency destination I do hope he actually ends up leaving Washington but there's something in me that thinks he'll probably just stay in Washington like he do has done the past few times he's been in the free agency market he ha has about I think two weeks to test the market and see what he can do after that, he's probably going to be on the Wizards if he has not been traded or signed somewhere else. Where do you guys think Bradley Beal will end up? I always love to hear your guys' thoughts, so make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Comment down below what you guys think the NBA offseason is going to be like. Is this one going to be an exciting one or just a boring one? I'm hoping for some exciting news. Thank you guys for watching this one. I'll see you next time.